Transgender people should disclose that they're transgender on the first date. Well, what's stopping you from being a real woman then? What's between my legs? Do we let children smoke, vote, join the military, drive cars? Since we don't, I don't think it makes sense for us to let them decide their own gender. I'm under the tent with women, but I always tread lightly on what I'm going to discuss and opine on because I am not a biological woman. I don't live in your skin and I don't share your reality. There's this thing about trans women trying to fool cis men. Because I'll never be a real woman. I don't feel like I will ever be and I don't want to be. I want to be trans. I love who I am. Welcome back to the Be Free YouTube channel, everybody. My name is Brian Tarada, and today we are asking the question, do cisgender women and transgender women think the same? Transgender women are real women. No matter what you do to look a certain way, your insides are still gonna be the same. So your DNA, if you were born male, your DNA still says you're a male. So if Bruce Jenner donates blood somewhere, or Caitlyn Jenner, they're gonna test it and say, oh, a man donated. So no matter what you do to look like, the way you need to feel on the outside, you're still gonna be the same on the inside. I don't think of it in that way as in like the DNA situation um, or what my ID says. It says I'm a female. Um, and when people look at me, that's what they think I am. In that regards, I 100% agree. Totally. But when, when I think of that question, I think of how people perceive me and how I look. And that would be a female. I, I'd agree as gender as a social construct, meaning woman, gender, social construct. When you're getting into the biology of it, the biology is what the biology is. So when the question is, um, are real women? Well, we present, we act, and we go through life as women. And so that's why when I hear are trans women real women, to me, that means yes, because when we're walking down the street or interacting with people, hopefully they're not checking underneath our skirts or taking a blood sample. Looking at the biological standpoint really erases people who are like intersex because they have either like an extra chromosome or they have like, no, uh, they're missing a chromosome. So like when a doctor looks at their DNA, it's gonna say, they're what? It can be really limiting to just look at the biological standpoint. Gender is a social construct and it is, like people just clock you at whatever box they have in their head. Um, and as long as you fit into that binary, you're going to be perceived as that. But even if you do not fit into that binary, it doesn't mean that you're not a woman. I think as long as that's how you feel inside, that's all that really matters. Grace, does it make you want to change your position at all? No, because then I feel like we need to redefine what the word real means. Because different people view the word real different ways. And I think that you're able to have your opinion and feel the way you want to think. Like, you don't ever have to change your opinion. You're you're able to feel that because that's how you want to feel. Everyone should not feel the same way. That's just a weird world to live in. And how boring would that be if we yeah. all thought exactly the same way? I don't want you to. I want you to feel the way you feel and I'm going to feel the way I want. If we all love the Barbie movie, how boring would that be? There would yeah. be no discussions like we've been having across this country. I do feel like it's more harmful than to like not have a streamlined definition of real woman because like think about the whole bathroom trans uh, controversy where there are some states that don't allow like trans women to use the female bathroom and it's because they're clocking them as not a woman and not a real woman and that's creating a lot of dysphor dysphoria and like trauma and it's unnecessary because someone just needs to pee. Where the rubber hits the road sometimes is not that it's just the definition but the actions taken upon the definition, which is example of the, the bathroom issue. To real women, trans women, are they the same? When you're just talking about the semantics of the definition, it doesn't really mean as much. But then when you maybe say, real women are biological women and real women can only use a bathroom designated as women's bathrooms, then you're getting into whole different territory because you're potentially discriminating against a certain person because of what that definition is and that you use the definition of biology as the only definition for what a real woman, 
versus a non-real woman is. I'm really curious as to, say, as to know why the both of you only somewhat agree instead of strongly agree. What's keeping you Because I'll never be a real woman. I don't feel like I will ever be and I don't want to be. Well, what's stopping you from being a real woman then? What's between my legs. And even if I had surgery, I still don't feel like I would fully be a real woman. I was born a male and that just is what it is. But I'm very confident and secure in my skin being trans and that's what I want to be. Like if I died right now and God was like, come back to life and be whoever you want to be. I want to be trans. I love who I am. One of the ways that I've approached um, the real woman versus trans woman for years has been, because uh, I transitioned later in life, and part of it is there's the tent of biological women, and I've always kind of felt like I'm just kind of on the edge of the tent, and I peeked under, and I kind of go to the edge, and I look underneath, and I stay there, and I'm very careful on certain what I call real women issues, like, for example, abortion. I don't have to worry about an abortion, and I'm very cognizant of keeping my views on abortion um, not saying, saying it as though I am a biological woman. woman. So I'm very cognizant of that. I'm, in, I'm under the tent with women, but I always tread lightly on what I'm going to discuss and opine on because I am not a biological woman. I think it's because I am a cis woman and I don't, it's kind of like what you're talking about, how you don't feel like you have a lot of, you don't want to like be the face of like an abortion movement. I'm just like, I, I, if you want to be a woman, you're a woman and that's who you are. I can't judge you for it. I don't live in your skin and I don't share your reality. So who am I to say like, that's not true. Transgender people should disclose that they're transgender on the first date. You definitely should because number one, if someone finds out you're trans and you are to get the ultimate beat down, that's the shoes you put on and that's what you chose to do, not disclose who you are. I think it's completely bizarre not to say who you are. You should feel very confident and secure in your skin to want to say I'm trans and why are you going to waste your time going on a date with someone who may not even be interested in you if you are trans. I always say it, that's like one of the first sentences I say when I even speak to someone, and usually they don't even care. I do disclose, personally. There are, I don't dictate that for others, and part of the reason is I get a little concerned because sometimes there's just this conflation of sexual orientation and gender, that many people, cis people, they believe that by being trans, there's something that has something to do with your sexual orientation as well. They conflate it. That must mean that you are this. And on a first date, if the whole meaning of the first date is to have sex, well, then it's kind of like, is that really what a first date is for? Um, a first date is to get to know each other a bit. And um, maybe you disclose it during that first date. But to be that you can't even have a first date without disclosing it, for me, again, personally, I do disclose it. But for others, they might not feel like someone will try and even get to know them because they might think, well, that has something to do with sex right off the bat. Say I'm out and about at a club or something and a guy wants to buy me a drink, I'm not going to tell him I'm trans. If he likes what he sees, then baby, let's drink. But if he's trying to do the most and like kissing and touching all over me, then of course I'm going to express it. But if you're just buying a drink, then you like what you see, so purchase the drink. Well, I'm from the Bible Belt, where we teach people that honesty is the best policy. And I feel like if you're not going to be honest up front, what kind of relationship are you going to have? And you tell the person five days later, and they're like, well, why didn't you tell me at the beginning? That's a huge part of who you are. Are you trying to hide something? Are you embarrassed? Like, well, I don't see the point of not being honest right up front. And if that person has a problem with you because you're trans, that's not someone you want to be with anyway. Right. So why are you wasting your time? Just be honest and open up front. So if someone is bisexual, should they say that right up front when they're meeting somebody? It depends on if they're looking for a long-term relationship or a hookup. <laughs> but they're just meeting someone and they're going, they're meeting them, let's say in a first date situation, nothing about sex at that point. It's just about getting to know each other. Should they say, by the way, I'm bisexual because they're meeting with, let's say they're meeting with someone of the opposite sex and they have to come out right away. Definitely have had um, instances where I actually did tell them I was transgender and there was just 
felt a little bit odd in the way that they approached me right from the get-go versus another time when um, it was a coffee date, literally just meeting for coffee very first, didn't mention it, and it just flowed a little differently. You should do what makes you comfortable, and if you're at the point where you're not comfortable disclosing your identity to someone you're dating, then you, you should do that at your own pace. In our society, there's this thing about trans women trying to fool cis men. And there's been a lot of violence because of that. And there's even some states where it's actually a defense to an assault that the person didn't reveal who they were. And so that the attacker then said that they felt like they were being fooled. And I really don't like playing into that. If you're not upfront and honest, you're trying to fool me. You're trying to put one over on me. And that gives me the justification to lash out at you. What if, for example, uh, two cis people, one wants to have children, one doesn't want to have children. At what point do you say that in a, in a relationship? How serious does it get? Are you saying that on the first date? Would a, a, a genetic woman say to a man on the first date, oh, by the way, I don't want to have children. I mean, that's just like, okay, whew. <laughs> I have a friend who doesn't want children at all and she always makes it very clear on her first date. Like, I'm not wasting my time, sir. If you want to have children, I don't. Okay. And that's part of my reason why I'm kind of on this, you know, I'd say for me, I would do it. But for others, you know, that's a, that's a statement that you never know if someone does change their mind about having children, the man, because let's say he's on the fence. And she said that right away, then he's no longer on the fence maybe. Maybe he gets pushed over, okay, this isn't going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Whereas if he didn't know that on the very first date, maybe he would continue on. Right. Yeah, being trans is a very, very personal experience and journey. I mean, I can only imagine I'm just gay and that was its own personal journey to where I am now. And there's times when I'm just walking down the street and I would rather just not have people know that about me, not because I don't want anyone to know, but because I don't know who they are or what they think and I just am going about my day. And then fast forward to going on an actual first date and sitting across from someone. You know, when I go on a date, people know. They know, I'm, the other guy knows I'm gay, I'm on a date with a guy. But when you go on a date for transgender people, that's, uh, again, so personal to you. Like, what a huge thing to reveal to someone on the first date. And so, Grace, would you say that you, on the first date, reveal to someone something as personal as what they would have to? I would, because for me, I've never been on a date with someone that I didn't know really, really well already. And I could already see there was marriage potential there, because otherwise, I'm just wasting my time. I don't, I've never done Tinder or random pickups in bars. There's always been a guy I knew well enough and long enough to say, this is a really great solid guy. I could see this going somewhere. So on the first date I would say, by the way, I don't want kids. <laughs> Cause we're already there with the intention of moving towards marriage potentially. I have to say, I do disagree with you that not wanting to have kids is as personal of a journey as, not, as being transgender. One, because it's a choice. If you don't want to have kids, that's your own decision. It's not something that you know, if someone's judging you for that, at least you had control over that and that's like what you actually want. When you're transgender, you're born transgender, that's who you are and you've faced a lot of discrimination for that. You've had to pay a lot of money, you might have like been disowned by your parents or by your friends and your community or you could be put in danger for it as well. And I, I just don't think that that's as personal of a, a revelation, especially like to reveal to someone on the first date. Yeah, it's like when I go on a date with a woman or someone who identifies as a woman, I feel like I, I do have to tell them that I am into whatever yeah. uh, because there is this stigma about bisexual women in the queer community. And then also for like, when I go on dates with men, I also have to tell that to them too. Because and I think usually a man is fine with a woman to be bisexual. Not really. No, really? They are at first and then you get you know, political they like, and they're they like- They like to uh, get into You it. have theories? Well, then it's frustrating because you wasted the time and emotions investing in that person, and then you find out, oh wait, this is non-negotiable. Dang it! Why didn't we talk about this up front? It's one of those things where it's like, it, I don't think it needs to be non-negotiable. Like, if you like me and I like you, what does it matter? Like, who else I might sleep with, or like, what's inside of my pants? I think if there's like a human connection, then that's dope. But I'm also queer, so I like a bunch of people. Expressing that you're trans could get you very hurt, and then you know, just saying, um, 
I don't want to have children can't exactly get you hurt type situation. So I agree, they're not exactly the same. You said lifestyle choice. Being trans isn't a lifestyle choice. It's just like a reality. But you could choose to live that way or choose to not live the way because there are people that do. There are people that live both ways. Yeah, I, but I think it's because of the situation, not because of their desire to. Like, I think if every trans person had the opportunity to be out and open, they would. Because they're living in misery, for sure. Yeah. I assure you. Yeah. Assure you. And so many people do think that being trans is just a choice, that you've chose to live this lifestyle and therefore you can choose not to, or that the fact that you did means that there are certain consequences with that and you just gotta deal with them because you made that choice. And that's where I think sometimes the discrimination comes from because they think you weren't born that way, you chose to be that way. And that leads to a lot of problems. It should be illegal to transition before the age of 18. Mm -hmm. That's agreed. Below 18, even once you turn 18, you are constantly changing. Your mind is changing. The way you feel is changing. Your thoughts are changing. Being on hormones, it may give you a physical look, but I don't feel like people really speak about what it does to you mentally and what it does to your emotions and the way you feel. It's literally the ultimate roller coaster. And I couldn't imagine being 13, 14, 15 and feeling those ways. If you wanna dress that way, yes, but taking hormones and stuff and having surgeries, absolutely not. I think if we had universal health care, it would be a different story. But since it's really expensive to go through all of the surgeries to become the person you wanna be, um, I think ha giving someone something like hormone bro blockers at like 13 can do worlds of justice than having them wait until they're 18 and have like already gone through puberty. Whenever you're that age, you don't think, oh, I wanna have children, but then you get older and be in a relationship, then you wanna have children, then what do you do? You know, gender affirming care is a wide spectrum, not just surgeries, it's not just hormones. And there's a reason that the American Medical Association, the American Pediatrics Association, the American Psychology Association all feel that gender affirming care for youth is necessary. The Trevor Project has shown countless studies where there's self-harm if kids are not allowed to at least do some level of gender affirming care when they're identifying as the opposite gender. There's so much self-harm out there. Um, when they're under the care of a, a doctor and a psychiatrist, psychologist, whichever the proper one is, that they can have gender affirming care. No, this doesn't mean surgery. It doesn't, even puberty blockers do nothing to your ability to have a child later in life. Um, my understanding is, is that testosterone for trans mask men, there's nothing about the testosterone that's gonna keep them from having children down the line. So it's just this conception that if you're under 18, you don't know any better. And my feeling is they do know better in the sense that they understand what they're feeling. And if they can't live as they want to live, they're gonna hurt themselves. Do we let children smoke, vote, join the military, drive cars, do anything of any sort of massive consequence? Since we don't, I don't think it makes sense for us to let them decide their own gender, especially when Natalia was like saying, there's so much changing, the hormones are raging, you've got acne, there's so much stress, high school is just so much, there's so much that happens and you change your mind all the time. If you guys have ever spent any time with teenagers, they change their minds all the time. I personally met so many people who've done the transition and they realized, oh wait, I think I was happier the other way. And then they have to figure out a way to de-transition. So I can't imagine letting a child do that. Studies have shown that the level of detransitioning is way below what people think it is. They hear, because that's what gets publicized nowadays is someone, oh, I regret it. The level of detransitioning, the regret is very low compared to other things. Like I would, literally smoking has a higher level of regret than people who transition. Cisgender women experience less discrimination than transgender women. Yeah, the world's just fucked up and people just really are afraid of 
femininity for like a lot of cis men who are like straight and like stuck in their ways. Trans women are more of a threat than cis women and because of that they face more danger and like more violence. For women it is a situation just existing in the world when it comes to a man. When being trans, being like super passable, I think that it could be an easier life but um, it's still a difficult life, especially when people do know you're trans. I think part of it comes from being in the norm versus outside the norms. And at least at this point, being um, cis female versus trans female, the trans female is still more outside of the norm. So there's a little bit more of a stigma still. And of course, recently that's amped up a lot. Well, they just made trans a complete, almost a joke almost at this point, I feel like, like it's just, We've come so far, and now they're kind of backing up, I think. For me, part of the Amped Up is just so much focus on such a small population. Recently, the Missouri Attorney General passed an emergency rule about trans-affirming care for both minors and adults. And I thought to myself, why is there an emergency rule? And I looked and I saw in Missouri, there is only 0.02% trans population, about 9,500 people in the entire state and he was passing an emergency rule. And it's, that's why as so much of it is, there's so much focus on such a small population. Not everybody gets it, because not everybody has met a trans person, so they don't know how to react when they do, because I know many people who haven't met a trans person, so I'm from the South, where it's still kind of a new thing. I mean, in LA it's normal, but from this, when I'm being from the South and knowing a lot of people who've never met a trans person, they don't necessarily know how to react. I've seen that trans people don't get treated very well, I see they get bullied a lot. I see that homosexuals get bullied a lot when people don't understand why they would choose that lifestyle when there's other lifestyles where life is so much easier because it's set up that way. For example, you don't have to come out to your parents if you're straight. They just assume you are because that's the norm. I was lucky enough to feel like a woman um, and like feel like complete in my body. I had 18 years of being socialized as a woman and trying to figure out what femininity meant for me. And I just don't have to deal with the socializations of like masculinity that like you guys probably had to deal with when you were younger. And I don't have that duality in my head all the time. Because I mean, I have my like roommate is transitioning right now and she doesn't have the financial resources to present the way that she do wants to. And you can see how that in and of itself is like a huge barrier because she has to go through all of these surgeries, which will give her fulfillment that she's seeking. But I don't have to do that. I was born with a vagina and boobs and I can just, I have the luxury of going into a store and being like, this is an outfit that's meant for me and I can like wear it. Thank you so much for watching Be Free and we will see you next time.